Thomas's branch line had a station by a river. As he rumbled over the bridge, he would see people fishing. Sometimes they stood quietly by their lines. Sometimes they were actually jerking fish out of the water. Thomas often wanted to stay and watch, but his driver said, No, what would the fat controller say if we were late? Thomas thought it would be lovely to stop by the river. I should like to go fishing, he said to himself longingly. Every time he met another engine, he would say, I want to fish. They all answered, Engines don't go fishing. Silly stick in the muds, he would snort impatiently. Thomas generally had to take his water at the station by the river. One day, he stopped as usual, and his fireman put the pipe from the water tower in his tank. Then he turned the tap, but it was out of order and no water came. Father, said Thomas, I am thirsty. Never mind, said his driver. We'll get some water from the river. They found a bucket and some rope and went to the bridge. Then the driver let the bucket down to the water. The bucket was old and had five holes, so they had to fill it up, pull it up, and empty it into Thomas's tank as quickly as they could. There's a hole in my bucket, dear Eliza, dear Eliza, sang the fireman. Never you mind about Liza, said the driver. You empty that bucket before you spill the water over me. They finished at last. That's good, that's good, puffed Thomas as he started, and Annie and Clarabelle ran happily behind. They puffed along the valley and were in the tunnel when Thomas began to feel a pain in his boiler. Well, steam hissed from his safety valve in an alarming way. There's too much steam, said his driver, and his fireman opened the tap in the feed pipe to let more water into the boiler, but none came. Oh dear, groaned Thomas, I'm going to burst, I'm going to burst. They dampened down his fire and struggled on. I've got such a pain, I've got such a pain, Thomas hissed. Outside the last station, they stopped, uncoupled Annie and Clarabelle, and ran Thomas, who was still hissing fit to burst, on a siding right out of the way. Then, while the guard telephoned for an engine inspector, and the fireman was putting out the fire, the driver wrote notices in large letters, which he hung on Thomas in front and behind. Danger. Keep away. Soon the inspector and the fat controller arrived. Cheer up, Thomas, they said. We'll soon put you right. The driver told them what had happened. So the feed pipe is blocked, said the inspector. I'll just look in the tanks. He climbed up and peered in. Then he came down. Excuse me, sir, he said to the fat controller. Please look in the tank and tell me what you see. Certainly, inspector. He clambered up, looked in, and nearly fell off in surprise. Inspector, he whispered, can you see fish? Gracious goodness me, said the fat controller. How did the fish get there, driver? Thomas's driver scratched his head. We must have fished them from the river, and he told them about the bucket. The fat controller laughed. Well, Thomas, so you and your driver have been fishing, but fish don't suit you, and we must get them out. So the driver and the fireman fetched rods and nets, and they all took turns at fishing in Thomas's tank while the fat controller told them how to do it. When they had caught all the fish, the station master gave them some potatoes, the driver borrowed a frying pan, while the fireman made a fire beside the line and did the cooking. Then they all had a lovely picnic supper of fish and chips. That was good, said the fat controller as he finished his share. But fish don't suit you, Thomas, so you mustn't do it again. No, sir, I won't, said Thomas sadly. Engines don't go fishing. It's too uncomfortable. Thank you.